Hello. <laughs> oh my god. Let's get started. I'm gonna use this La Roche Pussy. <laughs> La Roche Posay. <clears throat> I'm gonna use this anti redness moisturizer that has some SPF in it. I really like it. It has like a green tint to it. Anywho, so I was going to film a video about um, friendship, the definition of friendship, like the concept of it. Basically, change of plans. That's going to be a my next video or a later video. Something. I have plans for this evening to go to my boyfriend's house and uh, hang out with him and take some photos now you may ask who is my boyfriend um everyone's like oh my god erica has a boyfriend has she been keeping this a secret um his name is george mckenzie <laughs> his name is george mckenzie um how old is he well i won't do the math but he was born in the early 1600s <laughs> And uh, he passed away in the late 1600s. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to Greyfire's Kirkyard, which is this famous graveyard. I also, I'm gonna use um, the NYX Marshmallow Primer, which I use in every video because it just smells so good. And it's supposed to help with redness. And I have some like, you can't really see it, but like, I have this like patchy dry thing right here. And obviously I have my redness on my cheeks. Um, anywho, I am going to go to the graveyard. This is the graveyard that uh, J.K. Rowling, she who must not be named, um, got her inspiration for some characters in Harry Potter. This is where there's a grave to a uh, stone... And I think, I don't know what the first name is. It might be Thomas, actually, but it is, I think it's Thomas Riddle. Um, and then there's also a McGonagall one. And that's, she has said herself that that's where she got the inspiration for those characters, their names. And we're going to be talking about George McKenzie today, who also some say is rumored to be an inspiration for Peeves, the poltergeist in Harry Potter. So as I'm doing my makeup, I'm going to talk about my boyfriend and a little bit of very quick history on who he was, what the deal is for today. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go in with my usual Lancome tint miracle. Um, okay, so George McKenzie was a lawyer. He was an attorney, lawyer, and a judge. I don't know if he was a judge, but he was definitely a lawyer. And he was infamous for basically being a part of a group of individuals who created the world's first concentration camp here in Scotland. And where was it? Greyfriars Kirkyard. And he persecuted a lot of people. He led a bunch of executions. But what's interesting is that Scotland is also one of the countries that had really horrible witch trials before the Salem witch trials. He was actually one of the lawyers um, who came forward and was basically like, guys these aren't witches these are just like old women like move on forget about it like this isn't like this is silly and i thought that was interesting um because he later became a man who approved and led these executions for coventures basically a group of individuals who refused to convert to the religion of Scotland at the time, the religion of the king. And uh, yeah, so they basically <laughs> executed all, they put them all in concentration camps where they died from malnu malnourishment, 
um, abuse. Point of my story about George McKenzie is that his tomb in Greyfriars Kirkyard is known to be haunted. When I first came to Scotland, I went to go visit the tomb. I went to go visit the graveyard and I was told about, you know, the stories. And I thought, mm, I don't believe this. I don't think this is haunted. Basically, I didn't believe that it was haunted. I thought it was all just a joke, you know, just scary stories. And uh, that's when I, you know, first learned about it. And so I, of course, me being the little, the bitch that I am, decided to go up to the tomb and taunt taunt him and so i ended up getting back home to los angeles and i i mean listen my family a disclaimer my family does believe in paranormal activity um we do believe in i mean maybe not paranormal activity like everything like demons and stuff but we do believe in ghosts um we've all had our own experiences with ghosts and i just had a feeling like sometimes something was off. And I had told my family about what happened in Scotland that summer. And they all basically were like, girl, you obviously brought home a ghost. Like you, t you taunted him and now he's haunting you. He's decided to hop into your bag, go on a little vacation to Los Angeles and come stalk you and haunt you. And I thought, what the hell? What the heck? Like, that's not fair. Also, I need to set this real fast, so. And so I was like, what the heck? I got this concealer to use for contouring because I know a lot of, you know, people who are into makeup, whatever, instead of getting like overpriced contouring sticks, they just get a concealer that's, a, you know, a darker shade than their complexion so that they can create the shadowing effect. Should we just try it? Just like a two dots? It blends out pretty nicely, actually. I'm not putting too much on. Okay, so basically, so I added just a little bit of contour. Okay, now I'm gonna bake, and while that's baking, I will continue with my story. Okay, so as that's baking, so basically, I my whole plan was when I returned, I would go back to the graveyard and I would apologize to this misogynistic man and try to get him to go back to his home. And so when I got out of my quarantine, my isolation, that was one of the first places I went to was the graveyard. And I went up to the tomb I'll put a photo of it here and I basically was like oh, I'm sorry for taunting you that's that's what happened um and so I wasn't experiencing anything for a bit and I just kind of forgot about it but then I moved I switched apartments and I moved to this apartment as I was living here in this apartment I started to kind of sense things, not things that felt evil or like sinister. I just started hearing noises that just didn't really sound like they were meant to be happening. Um, I hear things shaking in the kitchen. I hear things kind of rattling, things in the oven making noises. Um, I'll wake up at like 3 a.m. witching hour and hear like my toilet gurgling which doesn't happen Often for it to feel like it's a plumbing issue. It just happens maybe like Once a week and then like I'll hear like kind of like noises on the walls like kind of like a like a banging noise But on the side where there's no one next to me like this side over there's no apartment So I'm not really sure how to interpret that also the next thing i'm gonna use is i bought this mac paint pot 
I'm gonna use it kind of as a primer for my lids. Um, also, the look I'm going for today is definitely more of a like milk maiden, cottage core, like pink, nudes, naturals. And so I started reading accounts of supernatural incidents in the graveyard and around the area. One of the incidents was a houseless man. He, it was raining one day. I don't know when this was. I wanna say it was in the, in, I wanna say it was in the 90s, like 1990. Um, and he, it was raining. It, the weather was, you know, how it is here in Scotland. It was like thundering, it was stormy, etc. And he went, into the tomb because at the time the mausoleum that uh george mackenzie is buried in um wasn't locked it's currently locked because of all of these incidents that have happened and he went inside to basically get some shelter basically the report i read said that the houseless man was looking like was opening the coffins i don't know if that's true or not and while he was doing that the floor beneath him caved in and he fell down into a third chamber that was unknown of, like no archeologist, no one had like known about it. And this chamber was full of decaying bodies. They hadn't, they're not skeletons, they hadn't fully decomposed. And so he was kind of like, oh my God. And then he ran out, ran away, screaming, was freaking out. And I think they ended up going back and, you know, they obviously examined what was happening. They like observed the scene and they decided that those, you know, carcasses were um, people from the plague, bodies from the plague that had not decomposed fully because they were just so tightly enclosed in this space. Yeah, so that was one of the first kind of like creepy situations that happened. Other incidents started to happen where they started doing ghost tours. They started doing like, you know, little walks around the kirkyard. And when they would go up to the George Mackenzie tomb, they would talk about how like, you know, there's been incidents of like hauntings. Some people have reported hearing like moaning and not like the sexy kind of moaning. It's more like groaning, like Ugh. And uh, they think it's because like I mentioned before, this area, the Kirkyard, was where the first concentration camp was uh, for the Coventures. And George Mackenzie was one of the people who set that up. And so his tomb where he's buried, he's literally buried right next to all of the victims that he murdered. So people have a theory that the groaning and the moaning is George Mackenzie complaining about being buried next to all of the bodies that he executed. Apparently, people who go on ghost tours there, they will return home and they'll see that they have marks on their bodies, like scratches, bruising, um, rashes. I talked to one of my sisters about it and she was basically, cause I told her, I was like, you know, I'm scared. I feel like something's gonna happen. What if I wake up one day and there's scratches across my chest or, you know, something chokes me in my sleep, non-consensual. And my sister was like, girl, you just gotta say no. Like if you feel anything brush up like against you or if you are sensing anything, just say out loud like, no, you're not invited here, go away. And that usually will work. I was like, what? The, what? Maybe if I literally just say no, he'll go away. He'll be like, okay, sure. Am I just taunting him still? Yeah, probably. And I, you know what, I asked my sister as well. I said, should I go and apologize? Like, do I have to fake being nice to this demon ghost man just because he's haunting me. Like he was a bad person, he was a bad person. I don't wanna be nice to him. I don't wanna be pressured into doing that. And she was like, no, why would you be nice to him? You don't need to be nice to a misogynistic demon. 
That is like going against all of your morals. You know, a lot of people are probably like, girl, you're doing this to yourself. Like, you're going back to those tombs and you're taunting him. Like, no wonder he's taunting you. If anything, I'm showing him a lot of respect by visiting him. I don't think a lot of people visit him that often. And I'm the only one who shows him any sort of acknowledgement. And you know what? Maybe that's something I need to stop doing. When we think of people who should not be named, Tom Riddle, Voldemort, etc., we just give them power. And so today is gonna be the last day that I go to the graveyard, which is why I am freaking prepping myself for freaking, like, I don't know, ritual or something. Guys, you need to imagine this makeup video as a get ready with me to break up with my boyfriend. I basically think George is haunting me because he's in love with me. Um, literally the only man in love with me right now. And he's dead. Like, that's great. He doesn't know yet that I'm breaking up with him, but... I'm gonna have a whole talk with him. I'm gonna bring my camera for the photos. And also, I will probably film at the graveyard so I can show you guys my soon-to-be ex-boyfriend's home okay the sun there's a cloud oh my god no it's coming back it's coming back um i would like to formally apologize to my eyebrows because i forgot to do them um and so i'm doing them now really quickly look no oh great now the sun's like oh shit filming let me come back out hello <sighs> go away also oh thank you went away also i got this Barry M. That's XXL Swell Extreme Lip Plumper. And I'm wearing it right now. And literally, my friends were like, Erica, it does not make enough of a difference for the pain that it's causing you. This stuff burns so intensely. My lips are, they are vibrating. I feel like I have a vibrator on my lips. And that's not where I want my vibrator to be. This feels so intense. Also, I'm just really liking this look. Now you can kind of see it a bit more clearly. I did like a nice brown, pink on top. I'm waiting for the eyeliner to dry. I'm gonna put on my magnetic lashes. Um, I have like a nice glow, a little bit of blush. I put maybe a little bit too much highlighter on my nose. But now I'm gonna do my brows. I've already penciled them in. I use a 3CE eyebrow pencil and then I'm using the Benefit brow gel or whatever and i like to just really make the fronts of them stand up straight and look a bit bushier so i think i'm gonna just do like a nice little like nude lip but i'm gonna first do my lashes just gonna pick it up like that it has these little magnets you can't really see them and they just snap like that this pair literally feels like i got caterpillars on my eyeballs but you get used to it. Now I'm just going to take this really pretty 3CE. Like that. And there you have it. Oh, I could take these clips out. There is my maiden look. And then I'm just going to set it with the spray. And that is a makeup look. You can do for when you go break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. I'll see you later this afternoon when you come on the walk with me to go break up with my boyfriend. Whee! Okay, so I'm watching WandaVision, but I was doing some research on George McKenzie because I feel like I need to give you guys a bit more, a bit more info. He acted as justice deputy from 1661 to 1663, a post that involved him in extensive witch trials. So those are the trials that he basically came forward and was like, what the heck, you guys? Like, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with these witches. Um, these women. As Lord Advocate, he was the minister responsible for the persecuting policy of Charles II in Scotland against the Presbyterian Covenanters. So these covenanters, I thought like, oh, they were witches, whatever. They were just Presbyterian, uh, like religious folk. And in 1679, Mackenzie imprisoned 
1,200 Covenanters in a field next to Greyfriars Kirkyard, which is right next to me. So that was the um, first concentration camp. Uh, most of them were executed, but hundreds of them died from maltreatment and malnourishment. His treatment of the Covenanters gained him the nickname Bloody Mackenzie, Bloody Mackenzie. Uh, it has been argued that both he and the Claver House kept to the letter of the law. Mackenzie resigned for a short time in 1686 before taking up office again in 1688. He died May 8th, 19... No, sorry. Oh my God, that would have been like, whoa, he would have been hundreds of years old. Okay. So he died in May 8th, 1691, and he was buried in Greyfriars Kirkyard. It says here, the Covenanters, who George Mackenzie killed, were a powerful political force in Scotland in the 17th century. On the 28th of 1638, a large gathering signed the National Covenant in Greyfriars Kirkyard, pledging to keep Scotland a Presbyterian country. This document formed a basis of a treaty whereby the Scottish government would support the parliamentarians in the English Civil War. However, 50 years later, Charles II was on the throne. The Covenanters had been outlawed and they were heavily defeated by the King's forces at the Battle of Bothwell Bridge. In all, 18,000 Covenanters died for their beliefs. 1,200 were imprisoned in the Covenanters prison, which is, was at Grave, which was at Greyfriars Kirkyard by George Mackenzie. He was the one who created it. Some were executed and their heads were displayed around the prison walls. The rest were corralled in the yard and left without food or water. Hundreds died and for some that last face they would have seen was the mocking face of George Mackenzie. Ironically, George Mackenzie himself was buried at Greyfriars. Uh, since 1999, there have been 350 documented attacks. 170 people have collapsed. Tourists have reported hot spots, cold spots, somewhere in the middle spots. They have been bloodied and bruised, pushed and pulled by an unseen, altogether unwanted visitor at the Black Mausoleum. Uh, so yeah, basically, that's just like a quick little recount of what I have been dealing with. Um, I have been blessed enough by my boyfriend, George, for him not to attack me really he more so just likes to play with me um and i'm gonna break up with him today i'm not gonna taunt him i'm just gonna say george this has been a great experience i've truly learned a lot from you um from being here i've learned a lot about you you were a very powerful educated man um you lacked empathy and that's something that I really needed a partner. I really need a partner to be passionate and compassionate, um, empathetic. I don't need a partner who's going to be going off and killing a bunch of people. So I'm going to break up with him and I'm going to do it in a nice way. If this is the last video I ever make, um, I love my family. I love my cats even more. Um, all the boys who have been in my life, I hate you. Don't ever talk to me again. Um, you know who you are. <laughs> and, uh, I'm happy I'm going out with a bang. So, I'll see you guys at the graveyard. Okay, well, I'm rolling. <gasps> really? Yeah. You're filming already. <laughs> Alright, Erica, where are we? We're at George McKenzie's mausoleum. Where <laughs> my... <laughs> This is George Mackenzie's mausoleum. This is where he lives, and this is my boyfriend who haunts me. And today, we're breaking up with him. We're breaking up because he's abusive, he's misogynistic. He executed about 1,500 people because of their religion, okay? That's why we're breaking up. <coughs> <laughs> Keeping this, because it's nice. Last time I'm coming here. This is the last time you're coming here? This is the last time I'm coming to this grave. <laughs> Bye, George.